What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about Acheron's teams. As you may have noticed, Braxophone and a bunch of other content creators have gotten the okay to put out a video a week early for Acheron. And in one of them, specifically Braxophone's video, he mentioned something along the lines of Sparkle being better than just having a second nihility character. So I thought it would be a great segue and use that information that he presented to go ahead and explain my take on Acheron's teams and why I think he may be right or he may be wrong. So if you enjoy this type of video, let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below, liking the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Without further ado, let's get right into it. As always, we're going to start by discussing the baseline for the test. And for this test, we're going to baseline a Pella with resolution light cone. That's why we have a 56% defense reduction here. Also, it triggers the 115% uh, nihility damage bonus that she gets from her passive. Also, she's going to be rocking her S1. I don't have the picture right here, but I'll show a picture of it, but we're going to be rocking her S1 and that gives us an extra 36% crit damage, 48% extra damage bonus, which is a very, very significant amount of uh, damage. It also allows her to stack one extra ultimate stack per skill, which is very, very valuable for Acheron. As far as attack sources, we are going to run a 20, the 28... <clears throat> As far as attack sources, we have 28% for traces. We're going to run speed boots for the majority of the test, but we're going to go into different scenarios later on. The orb is going to be attack. Rope, obviously attack. Flat attack for hands, 30% in sub, so we can get over the 3,000 um, mark. 12% for the planar set, which is going to be the one, the same one Braxophone used in his video, which is the up and coming new planar set. As far as damage sources, she has the 8% lightning damage boost that she gets by herself. Uh, the light cone damage boost, we put it over here. I don't know why I did that, but that's what I did. 12% for the pioneer set because we're attacking debuffed enemies. And then her 90% damage bonus after she ults that she gets a 90% damage bonus for three turns. So over here in the extra damage bonuses that we have over here, I have four different ones. And one of them says Nihility S. And then uh, one Nihility S and two Nihility S. This is an adjusted uh, cell. So if I change this to zero, this will adjust and uh, and give me the total damage bonus that we're actually getting when we take into the consideration uh, both of her 115% and then 160% damage bonus. So this is the adjusted and then this is just without anything else. The one that doesn't have the S. Aside from that, we have her minus 20 resistance for the target and then nothing extra aside for the aforementioned Pella 56% defense reduction. I'm going to take this time to say that if you compare one to one, what I'm going to calculate here and what Brax got on his video, it's obviously not going to be the same. There's a lot of variables when it comes to actually dealing the actual damage because um, everything calculates by itself and everything has its own different uh, multipliers here and there that it's really hard to keep track of unless you're running like a full uh, computer simulation, okay? I tried my best in this one, uh, but it's a lot of intricacies because these Nihility characters, they have different debuffs here and there, different buffs here and there. So it's a little hard to keep track of, but I did my best. I, I think I think this is pretty accurate. It's gonna be off by a little bit, but it's fine. It's not, it's not gonna be such a difference that is gonna throw everything off, okay? Essentially, this test is going to be what other character besides Pella gives Acheron the most damage bonus, okay? All right, so I already took the liberty in calculating each and every one of these characters. The, the only ones I'm taking into consideration is gonna be Sparkle, Gwenife, and Welt, Silver Wolf, and Black Swan. And the reason I picked these characters is because these four Nihility characters actually have some sort of debuff that contribute to Acheron's damage aside from Acheron's own Nihility buff damage amplification, if that makes any sense. So Gwenaifen has a vulnerability debuff. Welt also has a vulnerability debuff. Silver Wolf has defense reduction and resistance reduction. And then Black Swan has vulnerability and defense reduction. So all of these actually count for Acheron's own damage. And that's what I'm actually interested on. Like Kafka and Sampo and Luca, they are Nihility characters and they do contribute some damage in uh, via her own passive but they don't directly contribute to the damage formula of Acheron, if that makes any sense, okay? Unless you're running with the resolution like them, but then then again, you can just throw that in any Nihility character. The other character that I throw in here was Sparkle. As you may notice, Sparkle has a 40.7% damage increase, and that's more than everybody else. And this is because Sparkle gives the ability to Acheron to run attack boots. And I calculated this with attack boots and all of these with speed boots. If we were to calculate Acheron with a speed boots. So, so let's add in, let's add in Sparkle here. So she gets 15% attack bonus, which I forgot in my last video. She also gives him an extra. So my Sparkle that I'm using, and I'm using my own Sparkle, she has 150 something uh, crit damage. So in total, she's going to add a total of 85. And that's going to be that right there, 121. And then an extra 48% crit damage whenever she has everything uh, up and running. So it's going to bring this up to 96%. So if we're running speed boots with Sparkle, this is what we have. So this would put Sparkle in the same realm as just adding Welt, a little bit better than Welt. However, she's not just a little bit better than Welt. She's a lot better than Welt because she's giving 
Akron a lot of turns. So if Akron goes first, does her skill, then Sparkle brings her back up, that's, a, that, that's an exponential increase in damage. So if you run Speed Boots, Akron, she's still going to do a lot, a lot of damage because she's getting more turns. However, if you don't run a Speed Akron and you put Attack Boots here, 43.2, get her the attack boots right with the attack boots it's when you get this massive increase in damage because she can forgo speed you cannot afford to forgo speed if you're running another nihility instead of sparkle that is why sparkle gives her so much damage this 43 percent attack increase is actually very very significant also sparkle is giving akron more turns which she actually needs yes you sparkle is pretty much irreplaceable also you have to take into consideration that she's giving skill points to the team so it's it you can't really replace what Sparkle is doing. Not even Branya can. Even though Branya can get Acheron extra turns, she won't be able to get him extra skill points. And you're going to, eventually you're going to struggle with skill points because Branya wants to use a skill. Acheron wants to use a skill. Uh, I mean, if you run, I don't know, Pella and like some other nihility that you don't want to do the uh, skill. If you're on Black Swan, you're going to want to use a skill at least once. Servo Wolf is going to eventually use the skill to implant the, the defense or to reduce the resistance. I mean, if you never want to ult with Welt, then I guess you don't use your um, your skill. And then Gwenaifen needs the Fire Kisses. And uh, best way to get her ultimate and to inflict more Fire Kisses is by using the skill. So all of these characters kind of want to use the skill at least once. The only one that can get away with not using the skill is Pella, but we're already factoring in that we have Pella. So not even Branya can like match what she can do what sparkle can do for akron so that in the combination with the attack boot just makes sparkle pretty much like adding another nihility character when it comes to damage and then the craziest part is that i didn't even include a light cone in this calculation for sparkle like my sparkle is running a pass in future at s5 i think that's a 32 percent damage increase whenever she uses the skill and then akron goes right after so if we add 32 percent damage here is a 128 increase in damage bonus uh, it's not that much because we already have so much damage bonus, but it's still a lot more damage that it's still left on the table. It's about 50k damage left on the table there. But there is something that we have to take into consideration when talking about Sparkle. So if you notice, Sparkle's damage is across the board the exact same damage that uh, I display in my chart with, that, that it updates whenever I, I update anything in the, in the table, okay? Gwenaifen. She can only apply the fire fire kiss to three enemies at the same time. So I'm assuming that she's applying fire kiss to only three enemies. So the potential increase in damage, it's only until the three enemies. So the, the five enemies is kind of like left behind. Uh, the, the extra two enemies don't get any damage bonus, but the first three uh, do. Welt is the only one other than Sparkle that universally applies the vulnerability debuff to everybody on the field, which it applies to a uh, single target, three enemies and then five enemies. Silver Wolf only applies her debuffs to one enemy. So I only applied it to the main target. And that's why the single target here is uh, so high and the rest are just so low. And then Black Swan suffers from the same thing, uh, kind of like a hybrid between Silver Wolf and Gwenaifen to where her defense shred only applies up to the three enemies. And then the uh, vulnerability debuff that Black Swan uh, has that you can actually use for Akron because you can ult whenever it's their turn so you can get uh, advantage of Black Swan's vulnerability. It's added onto the first target, but not the rest. And that is why uh, the damage is a little bit lower than Sparkle, because Sparkle's damage increase applies to everybody, doesn't matter who it is, okay? Is that an overall positive? Yes, it is a positive because you can hit harder, okay? But I want to pay attention to this uh, damage number right here. That's 88,000, somewhere out of 94. So this is the amount of damage you're going to be doing to adds to adds um, outside of the main target. So usually in MOC and pretty much anywhere, you're gonna have a main uh, a main enemy, an elite enemy, and then you're gonna have a boss. And then surrounded by that, you're going to have like little trash mobs. So 88,000 is the damage that we're gonna be doing to the trash mobs. Only trash mob that I can find that has close to that is the lesser sting, which is the blowing up bug, the one that blows up, has 86,000 HP at level 95. That means that you're going to be pretty much one-shotting every single trash mob in the game with this uh, right here. Elite is a little different. They have like 300, 400k HP uh, around there. So you're gonna, it's going to take a little bit more. However, I'm more focusing on the trash mob. And I'm going to bring up an example in Brax's video 
that uh, kind of like opened up a little, like sparked a little bit of intrigue. So let's let's go ahead and check it out. All right, so here Brax is about to end Yang Ching's whole career with nine flowers, full ult, all the buffs active, defense shred, all the, all, all the whole nine, okay? So I want you guys to pay attention to something I'm going to point out real quick. Use their ultimate. Here we go, right, here we baby. Go. He's gotten... Okay, as you can notice, the swords... Two of the swords and the pig, uh, they're almost, almost dead. They're, they're, they're very close to dying. So let's see what happens. Nine stacks. Poor Yan Cheng is about to be removed <laughs> from this planet. All right. All right. So that's the first hit. So we have three more hits. Two of the swords already died. And I think the pig also died. No, the pig is almost dead. We have one sword alive and then one pig alive. Two of the swords are already dead, okay? Second hit. 163K. Okay, this is the second hit. At this point, everybody's dead except Yang Ching, okay? Every single person is dead. I'm gonna slow it down a little bit just in case it's harder for me to like pause it in time. But I want you to pay attention to what happens. That's so funny. Yay. All right, third hit. Third hit. Everybody's already dead but you're still doing 30k damage to a dead sword, 36k damage to another dead sword, 36k damage to another dead sword, and then 23k damage to a dead pig. The rest of the damage is going to Yang Ching. And then the uh, whenever, let's just speed it up at this point because it, it, I already proved the point that the last hit 500K. right here, boom, it's also doing 50k damage to this dead sword. Uh, I think it's 42k damage to the pig, 65k damage to something else. Like, the point I'm trying to make is that if you're doing this amount of damage to trash mobs, you're going to kill them before your ultimate is done. And then the damage that they would have taken had they been alive, it's still going to get added to the total damage dealt. Which, it is still damage dealt, but it's like overkill damage. Like, you don't need that much damage type of damage. So even though it looks like she's doing uh, 9 million damage, effectively she's really not doing <laughs> that much because everything dies before. Which is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's just something that uh, I noticed that Sparkle, since she buffs the damage dealt to everybody on the field, the actual effective damage dealt in in the attack may not be what you actually see in the screen, is what I'm trying to say. In that sense, uh, characters like Black Swan or even Silver Wolf are a little better in my opinion because this damage right here the ultimate single target damage because ultimately you're trying to down a boss right if you're able to do more damage to the boss and then lesser damage to the trash mobs which are going to die anyway the better you're going to end up being okay so in conclusion do i think having a uh, running sparkle is worth over a second nihility i think it just depends if your second nihility just happens to be server wolf then i'd say go for it run the speed boost run your fastest acron you can get and then try to do it like that because Server Wolf is going to increase your single target uh, a, uh, ultimate damage to the boss or elite enemy by a long margin. Same thing as Black Swan. So if you have Black Swan Server Wolf instead of Pella, that's actually really, really nice because Black, uh, Black Swan has like a hybrid between both. She focuses a little bit on single target and then a little bit on AoE. Server Wolf is just straight single target uh, debuffing. But Sparkle just buffs everything, which, you know, if you have Sparkle, yes. Uh, Sparkle is probably her best support, her best harmony support until we get something else that kind of works like a harmony support, but it's an ability character, okay? So when Brack said that, you know, running Sparkle is pretty much the same or a little better in some cases as running a one ability, I think the math kind of proves him right. And there's a lot of intangibles that I didn't go over, which pretty much are uh, how much, uh, how many more turns Acheron gets, how quickly she can get her ultimate, giving the amount of turns she's getting from Sparkle, the skill point efficiency that Sparkle brings that allows you to just spam skill points with any character at any point, because you're, you're ulting with Sparkle every three turns anyway. So, and you're using about, I mean, if you use one skill per character, which you don't have to because you have Pella, Sparkle just gives you a lot of options that no other character including the Hillary characters are going to give you. And I think that's something that um, Braxophone also said in his video. So I kind of agree with him. The gameplay suggests that it's right. My theory crafting suggests that it's right. So I'm just going to go ahead and go along with it. Um, it is very justifiable. Like the numbers didn't like don't lie right here. It does, they don't paint the full picture, but they also don't lie. Is this the uh, is 40 percent the effective damage increase? Probably not. It's probably a little lower because again, you're you're essentially wasting damage when you're overkilling all these like little trash mobs. But all that damage, she's still dealing the damage. Had they been alive, had they been able to survive those hits, they would have taken that much damage. So it is damage at the end of the day. And what we want to see is 900k on the screen. I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna keep it a buck. I want to see 900k on the screen. I want to see 700 uh, 700k on the screen. 
Um, that, but that's just me, okay? And to round out this video, I'm just gonna throw in Sustain Wild here. He gives us a 12% vulnerability debuff, and also he's going to amplify our damage, giving us the extra 50% over here. So I'm gonna add the 60% up here, the 60% up here. And uh, as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> this damage is uh it's a little bit crazy it gets out of hand so let's just copy this and then paste it right here and then we're just gonna add um we're just gonna add this cell right here yeah uh well sustained gets us <laughs> 119 percent extra damage uh yeah you don't be sleeping on your boy sustained welt uh, until we get another Nihility sustain character, uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to pair up my Welt and my uh, Acheron and my Pella together because uh, this is so much. Look at this. Look at this damage. And obviously, guys, it's not going to be 100% accurate. Obviously, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a lot more in game, actually. So, yeah, that is going to be the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And until next time, guys, see ya.